Today, we are continuing our reading from Saints of Bengal with the, with the story of Sri Chaitanya Das Babaji from Navadri. The Rajas of Krishna Nagar had been hostile to Vaishnavas. Raja Girish Chandra was also hostile to them. He did not believe that Mahaprabhu was, incarnation, was an incarnation. He once called a big meeting of Panditas in Navadri. The meeting had to decide whether Mahaprabhu was, was an incarnation or not. Shri Rajanat Vidyaratna was the principal speaker to speak on behalf of those who believed that Mahaprabhu was an incarnation. Buana Mohana Vidyaratna was the principal speaker on behalf of those who were opposed, opposed to it. The worthy battle lasted for two days. Heaps of books were produced from either side in support of its view. But no decision could be taken. Then Sri Vrajanath Vidyaratna requested Raja Girishchandra to invite Siddha Sri Chaitanya Das Babaji to the meeting. Siddha Baba was brought there. The Raja asked him, What is the proof of Mahaprabhu's being an incarnation? He remembered Mahaprabhu for a while, then said, I also doubted divinity of Goranga Mahaprabhu, like you. I was not able to decide whether he was God or a devotee. But today, my doubt is removed. Now, I believe firmly that Mahaprabhu is Bhagavan, and I owe this belief to you. The Shastras have said that whenever Bhagavan has incarnated on earth, the Rajas of his time have been hostile to him. In the Treta Yuga, Raja Ravana was hostile to Ram. In Dvapara, Raja Kans was hostile to Krishna. In Kali Yuga, Bhagavan incarnated as Goranga in Navadvi. Raja Krishna Chandra of Navadvi and yourself, his descendant, have proved that he is Bhagavan by being hostile to him in this yuga. You have given, given me great pleasure by removing my doubt. Therefore, I bow down to you with reverence. The Raja was happy to hear this and expressed agreement with what Baba had said. The Panditas began to shout, Chaitanya Das Babaji Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya Das Baba was born in village Vadara of Maya Mansiha district. He was named Jagabandhu. His father, Vaidyanath, and mother died in his infancy. And he was brought up by his uncle, Gauranat. At the age of seven, he was attacked by severe cholera. Gauranat gave him Charanamrita of his family, family deity, Madan Gopal, 
and he was cured. Since then, he developed great faith in Takur and his prasad. Sattvika Bhavas began to appear on his body in Kirtana and at the time of reading Chaitanya Charitamrit. Goranath apprehended on account of his bhava and vairagya that he might, might renounce the world. Therefore, he started negotiating negotiations for his marriage. When Jagabandhu came to know about that, he sneaked out of home at night and went to Navadri. He took Vesh from some Mahatma and was named Chaitanya Das. Sri Chaitanya Das Baba lived in a secluded room in the temple of Mahaprabhu in Navadvi. He always chanted, Gora, Gora, and remained divinely inspired, divinely inspired. He slept only one or two hours at night. Even while he was asleep, the sound Gora, Gora could be heard coming out of his breath. Every day he worshipped a book in which he had written, written in beautiful letters, the name Gora a hundred thousand times. Oh. Sri Chaitanya Dasa's mode of worship was according to Nadia Nagari Bhav. This is in Nadia Nagari Bhav. The sadaka has the concept of a lady of Nadia who is in love with Goranga as Nadia Naga or a citizen of Nadia whose attraction for the ladies of Nadia is immense. Sri Narahari uh, Sarakara, a companion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, had Nadia Nagari Bhav towards him. He often dressed himself like a lady, looked lovingly at Gora and sang, My love, Lord, my love, I have surrendered to thee my life, my soul, my honor, and, oh, and all uh, to thy lotus feet am I tied by chain of love. I pray that life after life thy consort may I be. As he sang, tears incessantly flowed from his eyes. After some time, he went to the door of the temple. Looking at Gora, through the veil, he said in a sweet voice, Darling, what will you eat today? He waited for the answer, then went to the kitchen and told the Goswaminis about, uh, these are wives of the Goswamis, uh, about the details of the menu Gora wanted to have prepared. They cooked accordingly. The service of Mahaprabhu in the temple during those days was conducted according to the instructions of Chaitanya Das Babaji. <coughs> Baba was the very figure of humility. Though a great pandita, he bowed down even to animals because he thought that the Lord resided in them. His only possessions were an old kanta and an earthen kamandalu. His power of tolerance also was great. 
he always tolerated even the worst behavior against him. One day, after his bath in the Ganges, he was changing the kopina, or small piece of cloth. Now, a strong wind was blowing. It was difficult to prevent the kopina from flying. It flew, and the ladies bathing at the ghat turned their faces in shame. <clears throat> at that time, Jagadish, Jagadish Maitra, a man of wrathful temperament, temperament, who was inimical towards Vaishnavas, happened to be there. He, he said to Baba angrily, Rascal, you became naked before the ladies? Get, get away from here, or I shall give you a, a good trashing. Baba blamed the wind, but promised politely to be careful in the future. Jagadish Maitra got wild and said, the villain does not own his fault and blames the wind and slept him and slept him, hit him. Men and women <laughs> at the gut were painfully hurt to see this. But Baba said with folded hands, Prabhu, you have meted out the right punishment and given me the right advice. You are my guru. I will never commit this kind of offense again. Pardon me. Three days after this, Jagadish Maitra had very high fever. He began to rave in delirium. Baba Maharaj, pardon me for my offense. But Every time he raved like this, he saw Baba standing before him with folded hands and begging for pardon. At the end, he became unconscious. Then his relatives went to Baba and requested him for pardon on his behalf. Baba gave them the tulasi leaf offered at the feet of Gora and said, You give this to him and eat. To eat. This will cure him. As soon as Jagadish ate the leaf, his fever was cured and his anit. Uh, animosity against the Vaishnavas also di disappeared. He surrendered himself at the feet of Gora forever. Bhima was another wicked and fe ferocious person who lived in Navadvip. He was also inimical towards Vaishnavas. He heard that at Dead of night, Chaitanya Das Baba indulged in amorous talks with Gora. He did not believe. One night, he jumped over the boundary wall of the temple and stood by the side of Baba's room. From what he heard, he suspected that Baba was conversing with some woman. He broke the door open. On entering the room, he was surprised to see Baba absorbed in deep meditation and to find the room filled with astonishingly sweet smell of flowers. He was shocked. He fell senseless on the ground. On regaining consciousness, he saw Baba still sitting in meditation 
without any consciousness of the external world. He quietly came out of the room. After passing several days in self-reproach and penance, he again went to Baba and begged for pardon. Baba not only pardoned, he embraced him and said, Dima, you are Gauradasa from today. Do Harinama and the service of the Vaishnavas. And Bhima became a Vaishnava. It is obvious from what has been said above that Baba was a Siddha Mahapurusha. He saw Mahaprabhu himself in the Sri Vigraha of Mahaprabhu and conversed with him. One day, his behavior in the midst of a large gathering of Vaishnavas convinced everybody of this. There was some festival in the temple. Many Vaishnavas had gathered, has gathered, had gathered. A group of them was to perform Kirtana. They started by singing Nadia Nadia Charya again, Nadia Charya Gelo Gora Sundar no Gora Sundara okay yeah Nadia Charya Gelo Gora Sundara Gora went away from Nadia Nadia Baba could not tolerate this in a fit of anger. He ran, ran towards the Kirtanias with a staff in his hand and said, If again you say like this, I shall beat and turn you out of the temple. Don't you see, Gora Chandra, the life of our life, the full moon of Nadia, standing before us and rad radiating light in the temple? They had to stop that kirtana and sing another. <clears throat> Once, when Chaitanya Das Babaji was too old, he went to Sri Kanda, where Narahari Sarakara Thakur used to live. He also went to the temple of Sri Gaura Vishnu Priya in Sri Kanda. Apart from his old age, he was at that time suffering from fever. Therefore, two persons were holding him from either side. <coughs> Suddenly, he forcibly entered the temple and closed the door from inside. At that time, the two persons who were holding him felt that he was too powerful for them. They could not hold him. He remained in the temple for more than an hour. No one knows what he did inside the temple. <coughs> When he came out, his face was radiant and there was a smile on his face. From his eyes, it appeared that he was swimming in the ocean of love. A large number of people had gathered outside the temple. Among them was Sri Sarvananda Thakur, whom he respected like his guru. He made obeisance to Baba. Baba placed his foot over his head. 
everyone was surprised to see him do this. Sarvananda Thakur's body swelled on account of manipulation and tears. On, on, on a, <clears throat> sorry. Sarvananda Thakur's body swelled on account of horripilation, and tears began to flow from his eyes. He also began, began to feel that he was swimming in love. Once Baba gave Diksha to a cobbler, uh, one who, shoemaker, yeah, Pogler is a shoemaker. He named him Vishnu Priya Valabadas. The cobbler began to live on the bank of the Ganges and do bhajana. The Goswamis of Navadvip held Baba guilty of violating the Shastras. They excommunicated him from the Vaishnava community. <laughs> the same night, Mahaprabhu said to the Goswamis in a dream, Baba is a Siddha Mahatma. He has not done any wrong by initiating the cobbler. After this, all the Goswamis of Navadvip, including those who criticized his Nadia Nagari Bab, began to hold him in high esteem. Siddha Mahatmas do not generally make a show of their supernatural powers. But Chaitanya Das Babaji had to do this when compelled by some special bhav or circumstances. Once the Goswami boys sought Baba's permission to lock a beehive in the courtyard of the temple, Baba permitted. When the hive was squeezed, about three and a half kilos of honey came out of it. After it was offered to the deity, everyone took some prashad. Yes. One does not know what Bab animated Babaji to say. Today I shall take the Adharamrita, the prasad of my Pranavalaba, my master of my life and soul, to my heart's content. He cupped his hands and Pyari Lala Goswami began to pour honey into his Anjali, that means cupped hands. He continued to do so Till Baba had swallowed the entire honey. It was a three and a half kilos, which must have been about three kilos. Everyone was surprised. When, when Pyari Lala Goswami's father and the other elderly Goswamis came to know about this, they were filled with anxiety regarding Baba's health and began to reprimand the boys. But next morning, they were surprised to see Baba doing japa as usual. Once more, the people of Navadvip had the occasion to see the supernatural power of Baba. One day, a ship carrying English soldiers from Calcutta to Mushi, Murshidabad anchored for a while at Navadvip near the Ghat, on which 
the Bengali ladies were bathing. The ladies began to flee, to escape. Two soldiers pursued them. They ran after them. At that time, Chaitanya Das Baba was bathing at the Ghat. The ladies took shelter under him. Baba trembled with rage and muttering, One knows not what. Who knows what he was saying? He sprinkled a few drops of water on the soldiers. Immediately, their vision was clouded with darkness. They somehow made their way to the ship, groping and staggering. Baba said, Rascals, don't you know that the ladies of Nadia are devoted to my Prana Vallabha? How can you touch them? Once in the afternoon, when Baba was half asleep and dreaming, he said, to the Goswamis of the temple. My Pranavalabha is calling me. You are all his own. Bid farewell to me cheerfully. The Goswamis did not attach any importance to the dream. Baba attended the Arati in the evening as usual and went and lay down in his room. At that time, he was slowly chanting the name. Tears were coursing down his eyes, and from time to time he shirked out, Ha Prananat, Ha Vishnu Priya Pranavalava. If anyone asked why he shirked, why he shrieked, shrieked why he uh, exclaimed, or uh, screamed, uh, screamed he replied, I am suffering the pangs of separation from my pranavalava. I cannot bear it anymore. The news spread all around that Baba was about to leave the world. Crowds of people, including the Panditas, the Goswamis, and the gents and ladies of respectable families of Navadvip, poured in to witness the parting of Baba. Baba told them, Today I am getting set for departure. Tomorrow I shall reach Pranavalama. The whole night passed like this. Many people went back, went back home. In the morning, Baba got up from his bed. He had the japa mala in his hand and was saying, Ha Vishnu Priya Vallabha, Ha Gauranga. And tears were flowing from his eyes. He said to whomsoever he saw, My Pranavalabha is calling me, take me to him. The Goswamis of the temple took him to the hall in front of Sri Vigraha of Mahaprabhu and made him sit on a cot. Baba looked at Mahaprabhu and started talking with him. After six hours passed like this, a large crowd gathered. The foremost Vaidya, the doctor of Navadvip, also came. He examined the pulse of Baba and said, I do not see any sign of death. The people started going round Baba and singing, singing Kirtan. Baba started singing in soft and sweet tones the following song, composed, composed by him. Adieu, Bhajan, like goodbye, farewell, Bhajan. Adieu, goodbye, Sadhana. Now Gora is my groom. I am his bride. So in uh, original, it is Amara Bhajana Hala Sara Sadhana Hala, I don't know. Gore Rakanta Ami Kanta Amara Gora. 
that was the He asked others also to sing that song. Looking constantly at the Sri Vigraha and singing the above song, Baba left his body to meet his Pranavalaba and ever be with him. According to Baba's own wish, his body was cremated on the bank of Ganges. The Goswamis brought the bones to the temple of Mahaprabhu and built his, built his Pushpa Samadhi with the, within the precincts within the area of the temple. Part of the bones were carried by Sri Vrindavan and Chandra Goswami to Vrindavan and the Samadhi was built there. In Vrindavan lived Sri Gaura Shiromani, a disciple of Chaitanya Das Baba. Baba told him in a dream at night on the very day on, of his disappearance, look, I have come to Vrindavan. The next morning, as soon as he opened the door of his kuti, he saw the dazzlingly resplendent figure of Baba standing before him and became unconscious. So this is amazing. <laughs> Mm. It's always interesting to see that uh, Vaishnavas that uh, are living in their bhava are often looked, <laughs> how to say, wrongly by others. This often happens. And in this case, uh, Goranga himself came in, in a dream to Goswamis to tell them that he was the Siddha Mahatma. But I believe many devotees here also had similar experiences that maybe they were excommunicated from some, some. somewhere. <laughs> Because uh, they followed their own path. They followed different path. He actually, he followed his heart. Yeah. But, you know, always we should follow our heart. And heart, don't lie. <laughs> Doesn't the lie. Heart does Somebody maybe wants to say something about this story or what it made you feel. Another Charan, maybe you have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're no, no, muted. you are still muted. Maybe I couldn't do this because Gurudev is here speaking by phone. I will just talk him. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we still have time. That's why we uh, selected one more story, which is short story about Sri Bhagavan Das Babaji. Uh, from Kavana. So I will read this. It is said that it is not possible even for the wisest to understand the behavior of Siddha Mahatmas. The life and behavior of Siddha Sri Bhagavan Das Babaji is a notable example of this. He was a disciple of Siddha Sri Krishna Das Baba of Govardhan. He belonged to Orissa, but lived in Kalana and worshipped Nama Brahma. 
That means Nama Brahma is no other than Krishna, the elder brother. It says elder brother of Krishna. See the next page. Uh -huh. No, no, it's the, the elder brother of Krishna is Balaram of Mahasham Sankarshan. Shisha is a part or incarnation of Balaram. For Baba, the snake is a manifestation of Shesha, the serpent with a thousand hoods that supports the earth, according to the Puranas. Interesting. That's a um, Nama, Brahma. Nama Brahma explanation from the footnote. Um, and but it says so he belonged to he lived in Kalana and worshipped Nama Brahma, that is the name of Krishna inscribed on a metallic plate. That means, like, we see sometimes devotees write the name of Krishna, write the name of Radha, <clears throat> and they worship the name as the deity. Um, Nama Brahma, installed by him, is worshipped in Kalana even today. It appeared from his behavior that he always lived in the transcendental world of Krishna Lila. Therefore, even while talking to someone, he sometimes laughed without any cause for laughter. The cause used to be in the stream of Lila that always flowed in his heart. He looked at everything of this world as pertaining in some way to the transcendental world in which he lived. One day, a devotee saw a snake in his ashram. He caught and threw it away. When Baba came to know about it, he became angry. He said to the devotees, Don't you know that the snake is the elder brother of my Nama Brahma? This, this is the actually the explanation of the next footnote that we read, that he thought this snake was actually not different from Balaram. You have ill-treated him. You must not come to the ashram again. For a long time, Baba remained displeased with him. Um, with this devotee. The snake used to come every day to take Thakur's prasad. The prasad used to lie before Baba until the snake ate part of it. He ate the snake's maha prasad after he had eaten. Apart from the snake, a bilau, a he cat, also lived in the ashram. He must also have been in some way related to Baba's Nama Brahma because he used to dine with him. Baba's time for eating was not certain because of his absorption in bhaja. But when Baba wanted to eat much later than usual, the Bilao came and moved around him meowing all the time to indicate that he was hungry. Baba then removed the cover of the prasad so that he might eat. He covered it again after he had eaten. Sometimes Baba did not want to eat because he did not feel inspired in bhajan. He told his disciples, I will not eat today because I am unwell. The disciples knew why Baba did not want to eat. They said, Baba, if you do not eat, we shall also not eat. Baba replied, very well, let us not eat. Let us all go to sleep. At last, the disciples had to eat because Baba sometimes did not eat for two or three days. 
He ate only when he got proper inspiration and was blessed with the darshan of Krishna Lila. Baba felt hungry only when he felt inspired in bhajan. Different kinds of waves of bhav often attacked the heart of Baba. He used to be so possessed by the wave that his behavior was completely governed by it. Although the disciples did not understand his bhav, they were compelled to create situation to suit his behavior. Once a strange wave swept his mind, he thought of building a pond near Nama Brahma and doing bhajan on a machana stand made of bamboos with a seat at the top well above ground or water for a man or men, more men to sit on. <clears throat> so uh, he was thinking of building a pond near Nama Brahma and doing bhajana on this machana in the pond. He said to his disciple, Ran Krishna Das, dig a pond near Nama Brahma tomorrow. During those days, the wages of a laborer were two annas per day. Ran Krishna Das engaged 50 laborers and got his pond dug the next day. Baba's heart danced with joy to see the pond. He asked his disciple, Jagadish Das, to bring bamboos on his own shoulders for making a machan. <clears throat> Jagadish Das brought bamboos and got the machan built. Baba began to do bhajan on the machan. After a few days, by chance, a calf fell into the pond. Baba was very much hurt at heart to see this. He had the calf taken out of the pond and ordered that the pond be filled up. Once the pujari of Nama Brahma stole the ornaments of Nama Brahma and fled, escaped, ran away. The inmates, the inhabitants of the ashram wanted to report the theft to the police. Baba said, Nama Brahma does not want to wear ornaments, therefore he was given them away to the pujari. Let him remain without ornaments. After a few days, pujari came back with the ornaments. He fell at Baba's feet and said, Baba, I had stolen the ornaments out of greed. But when I wanted to sell them, I began to feel very uneasy at heart. Therefore, I have brought them back. Kindly forgive me for my offense. Then Baba said to his disciples, Nama Brahma has again desired to wear ornaments. Therefore, he has managed to get them back. How childish! He does not take a tries to change his mind. He is now like this, now like that. Go, adorn him again with the ornaments. He engaged the pujari again for the service Nama Brahma. For him, it was not the Pujari who was at fault, but Nada Brahm, Nama Brahm. Baba did not like that his disciples should pray to Bhagavan for the fulfillment of any worldly desire. One, once his disciple Vishnu Das got fever, Fever continued for a number of days. Baba said to him, Vishnu Das, take some medicine. Vishnu Das said, Nama Brahma will be merciful and I shall be all right. Baba said, Yes, why not? You are such a Siddha Mahatma 
that Nama Brahma will turn a doctor for you. When you fall ill, you should take medicine. It is not, it is not good to trouble Nama Brahma for your sake. A special characteristic of Baba was that he did not ask his disciples to meditate on Krishna Lila, but made Krishna Lila appear in their hearts by infusing bhakti in them. Wow. I will read this again. A special characteristic of Baba was that he did not ask his disciples to meditate on Krishna Lila, but made Krishna Lila appear in their hearts by infusing bhakti in them. That. This is the mercy, the beauty of the mercy that Krishna Lila appears. It's not that one has to artificially meditate on his own effort, but when the Guru's mercy is there, then Krishna Lila appears in one's heart by bhakti. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the nice way what? to end this story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, interestingly, in both stories, uh, there are two things uh, that I noticed. Actually, in this last story, we can see whatever was happening, this Baba, this, uh, what is his name? Uh, in the last story, Sri Krishna does Baba. Um, he would see in any situation, like it's, it's a desire of his Ishtadev, you know. Uh, so even when that Pujari had stolen, those uh, ornaments, he said, oh, this is the desire of Nama Brahma, or his Ishtadev, that uh, he don't want to wear any uh, ornaments. But when that Pujari returned the ornaments, oh, now he wants to again wear ornaments. Yeah, they're seeing every situation as uh, uh, their desire, their how to say, even Kripa, you know, mm -hmm. arrangement. But also in the first example, uh, first example, that the Sri Chaitanya Das Babaji, he would see, uh, he would act always nice to everyone because he would see Gora in their hearts. Meaning, if we see Radhika in everyone's heart, everyone's hearts, how we can act badly towards those people? This is a good, even good practice that we practice seeing Radhika in everyone's hearts, heart, even animals, and how we would act towards someone who has Radhika in his heart? That's a good question to ask yourself. Sometimes we are angry on someone, we are fighting with someone, having bad thoughts about someone. Would we have that if we think that Radhika is also in the heart of that person? So this is, this is nice to have this vision. And this we can practice. Or, or similarly, like situations that happen, like what he saw uh, with the stolen ornaments, and he considered every situation connected to be connected with his Ishtadev. So we can also try to see every situation in our life as arranged, arranged by our Ishtadev. Every situation. In, in a way, this is a surrender, actually. This is surrender to your Ishtadev. Okay, I believe everything is your doing. 
your arrangement. So show me. Let me see your arrangements. And I believe that uh, life doesn't happen to you. Life happens for you. So in a way, our Ishtadev wants us to come to him. Or her. Or her. Yeah. So whatever they do, we need to believe that this is for our uh, benefit. To come easier and quicker okay. to them. In that way, we can all have meditation that Ishtadev, our connection and our relationship with our Ishtadev is alive. Not just when we sit down in meditation or bhajan, but all the time. Just like this nice example was in this last uh, story, how uh, Babaji, uh, what was the name? Um, Shri Bhagavan Das Babaji, yes. He saw everything, all happenings in his life as a part of the Leelas. He was so much in the Leela so that each thing that happened in his external, in like an external world, he, he saw as a, as a part of the Leela. Mm -hmm. Of course, maybe we are not always, <laughs> we are not in this consciousness, but, but just try to see at least uh, things that happen in our lives as connected or orchestrated by our Ishtadi. And that's very, very enlivening also. Yeah. So, thank you everyone for coming.